welcome. I'm Fred Balsiger. I work on the Windows Silicon team. I'm super excited to be here today to introduce my friend Jeff from Qualcomm. Jeff, why don't you tell us a little about what you do? Okay, great. Thank you, Fred. Um, so I lead the Qualcomm AI software team. We're going to talk a lot about um, our AI stack and so on uh, throughout this little chat. And uh, really excited to be a build. Just came out of a keynote, you know, day one. Uh, exciting stuff with all the generative AI and co-pilot stuff that's going on in Windows. So excited to kind of talk about how we can help. Yeah, and I have a handful of questions, and yeah. I, I bet the audience, perhaps folks online, do too. Yeah. But may I be so bold to jump in? Sure, let's do okay, it. So, based on the keynote, you know, the name the name of the day is running AI models on the edge, right? So, the edge meaning uh, on the, at the computer chip level as opposed to the cloud or Azure kind of thing. How does Qualcomm help developers with that? Yeah, great. So, we're really excited to be here at Build and uh, really introduce bringing the Qualcomm AI stack, I think I got a little diagram here, a Qualcomm AI stack from like our entire ecosystem also to Windows. Now, you know we've been partnering with Microsoft internally on the experience pack using our stack for a while, but now we're really excited about a whole bunch of announcements related to bringing the Qualcomm AI stack to Windows, and we'll talk a little bit about both, uh, you know, innovation with Honest Runtime, I think, in a bit, and also the Qualcomm AI Engine Direct, and we we'll can talk maybe a little bit about how different layers of the stack can help developers in different ways. But I think the important message is Qualcomm has been focused on AI at the edge for years now, right? We have Android devices and all kinds of devices, including you know Windows on Snapdragon devices that run our stack accelerated on a silicon and I think the important message of like the diagram that that everybody's seeing right now is silicon that addresses a whole bunch of markets and lots of ways that you can access that based on your experience as a developer your needs as a developer get onto the silicon and really develop one model in one way and use that stack to port it across all things. So whether you're in cloud or you're in edge or you're in automotive and so on, you can use the same stack and run stuff just everywhere. That's perfect. You kind of teased my second question, ah, which is like, hey, how, how are you supporting the Onyx runtime? So, you know, this week at Build, there's going to be a lot of familiar messages around development patterns yeah. and how you run your AI models both on the cloud, you know, and then on the edge and how that works back and forth. And so I think this diagram here really shows that Onyx runtime is a consistent story and or solution for developers they want to inference their AI models, and they do so at any particular level with Qualcomm. Is yeah, right? yeah. And so uh, really excited to be partnering with Microsoft on Onyx Runtime. Uh, you'll be able to see demos uh, in our booth. We'll talk about that later. Uh, showing Onyx Runtime, showing uh, some, a demo we'll show here in a few minutes, hopefully. And working with your teams, and really that's one of the ways, and I think maybe the, the preferred way for a lot of developers to be able to get their AI uh, models and bring them to Windows and hopefully Windows on Snapdragon also. And that is part of being, building up this consistent approach. So we'll talk more as we get into the stack. If you want to use Onyx Runtime, of course, that's a really powerful and kind of common way to do it for Windows in general. And sort of regardless of how you go about it, you're going to get the performance out of our silicon with this kind of common stack approach that we've been talking about. That makes sense. So talk about the deployment of AI models, right? Sure. Because I know you have the Qualcomm Neural Processing Engine SDK, but you also have this, I believe you call it the AI engine type of thing. And so deployment's a little bit of a you know tricky subject in terms yeah. of those two technologies. How do you unwind those? So let's go back a little bit to uh, this kind of more detailed diagram. And um, so you can, I mean, we saw lots of stack diagrams when, 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 when Satya was up on stage this morning. Uh, so it won't be a surprise to developers. But the way we think about it is that this AI engine direct layer is the kind of gateway to the hardware acceleration. And so underneath it, every IP block in our heterogeneous uh, silicon is accelerated for best performance for the kinds of workloads that that hardware really excels at, right? So, you know, in gaming, you might be on a GPU, and other applications, you're going to be on our dedicated AI hardware. That is a building block, and we use that building block to deliver the Onyx runtime experience. We use it if you want to come in kind of natively, we call it at the metal, so to right. speak. If you're a developer, you've got a threading architecture for your app that, you know, doesn't kind of fit these other runtimes. Um, in our other ecosystems in Android, it might be TF Lite, it might be our proprietary runtime. All of those runtimes, all of those bring your model to your developer experience 
are really powered by the AI engine direct. So it's a fundamental building block. We build our stack on it, and we've helped you guys build Onyx Runtime for Snapdragon in the same way. Okay, so so building on that, so like one of the things my team will be demoing later today, or maybe perhaps tomorrow this yeah. week, is uh, generative AI models. So something like stable diffusion, right? And so I think you know there's a lot of interesting software and hardware challenges when it when you goes into like how do you run a stable diffusion model, for example, some generative type of AI at the computer chip at the Qualcomm Snapdragon level. Like, how are you thinking about that? What are those challenges? Yeah, yeah. So excited. Um, you know, uh, I think uh, Satya said something this morning, like. Um, like, uh, you know, it's like we woke up on January and just started issuing press releases, right? right? So, you know, three months ago, if you'd have said, hey, let's stand up here and build and talk about generative AI on the edge, you'd be like, are you sure about that? So here are some example images. Um, we actually will have, in just a moment, I'll ask Ankit to come up and show us a live demo. We have a live on uh, Windows on Snapdragon. Uh, it's, you'll be able to see it both with our proprietary stack and with Onyx Runtime. You won't be able to tell them apart. They're nice. So the nice story here is you get the same performance as a developer, kind of regardless of how you want to interact with the stack. And so maybe the fun thing is let's do a live demo. and We can play around with it a little bit. Perfect. So if Anki kick him up here, and uh, he's going to drive, and we'll talk about it. Uh, again, this is Windows on Snapdragon device. This is Stable Diffusion. We can talk a little bit about some of the magic behind how it, it was run. We've got a couple props loaded up here, so we just have a couple you way. can pick from. No, we're good. Uh, a couple props that we can pick from. I think we're doing a country home. So if you have a design aesthetic you want to try. Um, on this device, um, uh, you know, I don't know, it doesn't take so long to generate an image. Well, we got a whole bunch of steps to make this thing run faster. I want to really underscore this kind of design and build once and run everywhere. This is the same model that we showed on a mobile handset at Mobile Congress a few months back. Okay? Wow, look at the so now. look at the picture. Very high resolution. And so th that developer focus on let's just build once and run it all over the place I think is super important because it gives developers that portability and they don't have to make that reinvestment in you know, their innovation. They can really focus on kind of the use cases. So, Anke, that's great. Why don't we uh, change the seeds? You can see this is live. You know, we'll have it in our booth. You can come play with it. Type in your own queries. It's an open query. Um, and so it'll run again. It's running. It's entirely on device. There's no cloud connection or anything going on here. Um, and to give you some idea, it's about a billion parameters to give you some idea about kind of the complexity of the model. And we'll get a different country home. So if you want to. So, oh, nice. This is, looks a little more like, uh, I don't know, Hall of Mirrors in Versailles or something. So, like okay, that. so really, why don't we switch back to this if you don't mind switch back to this. So, okay, really cool. We got this generative AI, and you'll be able to see it live here at the show. So AI is changing fast, right? There's effectively a hockey stick looking curve kind of thing for how we're investing, and it's, it's yeah. industry-wide. Yeah. And so what, what's, what does your vision look like over the next couple of years for Qualcomm in terms of the investments you're going to make in AI? Okay, so huge. I think I think um, you saw a sample of it this morning in in in, in the remarks at the keynote. Um, you guys are amazing innovators. I mean, I was blown away by like all the use cases that that you've already imagined and you've prototyped and you have running. You know, we look at a lot of different markets, and um, and so I think it's there's a lot of interesting use cases starting to emerge. Productivity use cases, I think, are, are kind of obvious. Uh, we have people who want to do this kind of thing, um, uh, create images. Of course, that's important. Uh, we have people who want to do, for example, transplant their family photo in front of the mundane restaurant to the beach, right? So you can imagine you know, combining computer vision techniques. Uh, we have some of this stuff running in our labs already. Um, you know, segment out your family. Tell a generative model like this, create a photorealistic beach scene, compose them back together, boom, do it entirely on device, right? So creative uh, use cases. Cases like um, in vehicle. So we don't think about like, okay, what are we going to do generative AI? But some of the whisper net stuff that was right. shown this, this morning. Like connectivity. I want to run some workloads locally on, yeah. the, on the compute for MPU, and then I want to hit the cloud when I need to. Kind sure. Of or even just you think, well, what am I going to do with generative AI in the car? 
but imagine interactive nav, so conversational nav. Oh, let's go pick up Susie, and on the way back, let's go get a pizza, right? Okay, plot all that out, right? What did you mean, this pizza place or that pizza place, right? These kinds of things where you think, oh, wait, um, you know, industrial applications for IoT, uh, all kinds of on-device productivity, screen summarization, right? Things that, in some cases, these are things, frankly, you don't want to send to the cloud. You don't want your chat, maybe, your memo have to go to the cloud, right? You're on an airplane. There's a lot of use cases where that blend of on-device and cloud and that natural transition, I think, can really complement each other. So really excited about that. So that's the use case side. The technology side, right? Like the build, where it builds, okay? What are the technological limitations? These models are big. So I mentioned a billion parameters. We're on track to do 10 billion by the end of the year, okay. give or take. So that gives you kind of an idea about kind of what we think is capable on a device, not connected to the cloud. And what does that take? Well, it takes thinking about the architectures. It takes thinking about like the custom silicon that we have. How do we get you know, parameters to it? How do we get to in for quantization, maybe lower? Um, how do we preserve accuracy when we do that? What do we do for memory management? These are all the kind of technical challenges that my team and others uh, at Qualcomm are looking at. And we've got some of the stuff running in the lab. I feel pretty confident that we're going to get there. And I think that's really the kind of gateway that we need. If you want to bring a co-pilot, you know, plug it into Edge or plug it into Word or whatever, and you really want that experience, we're going to need, you know, a sizable amount of that running on device so that it doesn't break on an airplane. You know, we all, um, I flew here, you live here. Um, you know, we want to bring that to the device and we want to make that a, a private, immersive, you know, high throughput experience. That makes sense. And so, you know, it, you know, I spent a lot of time getting ready for build, a bunch of people did. And you always kind of think about the audience, the developers that show up that are somewhat mm -hmm. interested in this tech. Like, what is the call to action for developers? Like, how, how do they think about, Great, we have a Qualcomm expert up here on stage. What, what is the call to action? What do you want them to do? Okay, so I want to come back to this, this idea of Onyx runtime as one piece, right? Uh, that's a big theme for, for you and for us at the show. And I want to come back maybe to a simplified version of, of the stack that's right. up here on the screen. And again, you can maybe re-hit like what appeals to a developer in terms of access, right? We, you know, we as Qualcomm, we want to be open to all different kinds of developers Again, whether you're developing like for Windows itself or you, in some adjacent market you're developing for other ecosystems, this idea that we've got a common stack that supports silicon from almost from ear, hearing aids and earbuds all the way up to you know compute devices, automobiles, and so on. This is, I think, super powerful for developers and partnering with you on Onyx Runtime, easy on ramp to getting your, your applications, your AI models on device. So um, I think just the takeaway here a little bit is, look, the neural processing SDKs are kind of proprietary runtime. It predates Onyx runtime. It predates a lot sure. of stuff. Um, we know you guys have used it, and now you're moving to Onyx runtime. And then if you're like, you want to be closer to the metal, you've got an app that only needs to be accelerated on like our hexagon accelerator. You're going to get best in class power performance on that accelerator and you can use the AI engine direct if that's the way you want to build your app. So kind of the call to action, a couple things. Um, we've got a booth, booth 428. People can come see us in the booth. You'll see the demos. You can play with Stable Diffusion to your heart's desire and you can see it both on Onyx Runtime and, okay. Um, we've got a bunch of talks. We've got a talk on on-device AI leadership by uh, Leandert, SVP at Qualcomm, runs uh, AI and a bunch of other hard software stuff, X Microsoft. Um, we got a talk uh, on hybrid AI, so this idea about cloud and uh, at edge. Apps ecosystem, so Windows on Snapdragon in general, like what kinds of things are we enabling, you know, where are we with, you know, compilers and all of the development environment around that, right? And then uh, deep dive by Ankit on Stable Diffusion. So you want to know a little bit more about how we built it. I should note, um, this this morning we did launch Qualcomm AI Engine Direct on our website for, uh, for Windows. It's the first time that we've announced it available for Windows. So you can get Neural Processing SDK and you can get Qualcomm AI Engine Direct for Windows uh, up on our webpage. Um, this is also a how-to on Stable Diffusion. 
So we break down in uh, Jupyter Notebooks, just I think there's three of them, break down kind of all the steps we went through, what we did for quantization, what we did to get it on device, how we kind of broke the model up in a way to manage memory and make the performance good and so on. So people can take a look at that. We're very excited about feedback on that. Um, so, but we encourage you to give it a go, try it out. There'll be more. We're going to be doing more developer facing stuff, particularly with Gen AI as the kind of months go forward. That's perfect. And so I'm looking at the slide here and this rings true to me, right? So my team shipped the Windows Studio effects. So these are the audio and video effects that right. leverage the Qualcomm Snapdragon NPU, the AI models. Uh, for a better collaborative, you know, video call. And so what we did is we first adopted at the bare metal at your, you know, your snappy, your, excuse yeah. me, your snappy. Your we, love, we lovingly call it snappy. But snappy, S-N-P-E, the, yeah. the Snapdragon Neural Processing Engine. Right. And so we first started there, yeah. right, because we needed to get something going really quick. And then now we're talking to first party teams, first party being all of our teams within Microsoft around embracing you know, Qualcomm and offloading your AI models onto the MPU in a consistent way. So then we're working our way up the stack That's that right. you're projecting here to the to the Onyx runtime. And so this this rings true even for what we do in house at Microsoft. Perfect. And I look at Onyx runtime. I think it's developer preview right at the show. I think um, the the uh, Qualcomm Q and N execution provider I believe is in preview. Preview. Okay. So again, we're looking for feedback. Like if you've got a model that doesn't run, doesn't run fast enough, you know, that's how we're going to make it better, right? So we'll work together support the developer community and, and get it done. That's great. And so, Jeff, I've been to a bunch of builds before, and so this format's quite a bit different than the other ones, where this is kind of supposed to be a very casual yeah. Q&A, yeah. and I hope we have an engaged audience both online and physically. And so if there were folks here that had any questions, by all means, like feel free to, to raise your hand. We have a couple people with microphones that come around the audience and, and you know get your question either heard on the call or we're happy to repeat that too. Uh, I don't know, if, but again, a casual format for those that are in this room. Yeah, open for some questions. We've got a little bit of time. Great. Uh, thank you. I'm David from Meta, and I've actually had some experience in getting to play around with these uh, technologies. And so I just want to, for someone who has a little understanding of, of Onyx Runtime and Olive, and also playing with this SDK, where can I go to square my product understanding and my SDK understanding for like the Venn diagram between what works on all of Windows, what just works here, and also how do I interact with it? So I'll take a stab yeah, and please. you can compliment please, if you want yeah. to. So great question. We have a couple sessions that are about Windows and AI and how to use Onyx runtime coming up today and tomorrow. And so what we will do at the end of those sessions, those are always recorded, of course, but we're actually going to give you a QR code that's got a landing page, it points you to a landing page with all the great documentation. So everything we talk about at Build, everything we show at Build is going to be posted up so you can get all the sample code and do it today. And it's really exciting, right? Because last year at Build, we had Stevie Batish get on stage as an exec executive keynote and espouse the idea of hybrid AI, how you're watching your AI models work in the cloud and you can move them back and forth between cloud and client. Well, today it's a reality. And so that's what we're super excited about. So pay attention to some of the Windows and AI sessions that are going on this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon, because we're not just going to show it to you. We're not going to demo it to you. We're going to make available codes, samples, and blogs, everything about it. So I, I think you'll, you, I suggest you'll have a great understanding of the Venn diagram, if you will, after looking at the content we're going to talk about later today. Okay, thank you. Good question. Did you have anything to add, Jeff? The only thing I'll just amplify is, you know, this, um, this, this um, AI Engine Direct-based EP, we're going to keep, you know, improving that, right? So the reason that we're making it publicly available is so that you can, like, go get the latest one and plug it in and why we made the how-to for some of our materials. So, again, we're trying to be transparent about, you know, how it all goes together so you can, you know, have a clear picture about that. Nothing else in the room at the moment. There's a question online. Yeah. Uh, Morimoto Johnson writes, will the Windows Snappy SDK be improved to include the tools so Linux is no longer required? For example, model conversion, quantization, etc." Jeff, I think this was This is probably for me. Okay, so we, yes, the short answer is yes. We're like, I don't know, maybe halfway through that. So when you go, you download the Windows um, uh, Neural Processing SDK today, you, it will contain some some Linux artifacts, it, at least it's all packaged together now, so you don't have to like pick and choose. And I would say within the next quarter or so, we're going to complete the transition for fully Windows native uh, tooling, right? Uh, we announced at the um, at our Snapdragon Summit in the winter, I guess, in, in uh, November, uh, upcom more upcoming tooling. So we announced the Qualcomm AI Studio 
uh, not to take from the keynote this morning, <laughs> the, the Model Studio, AI Studio, a little bit of a different twist. That'll be focused on these issues about uh, quantization, about conversion, this kind of stuff, more than like tuning prompts and so on. But um, that's also will be coming, and it will be, you know, it'll be, it'll run on Windows, it'll run on Linux, so you have a lot of choices there too. Assume that's still good. All right, we'll con continue on online. Uh, does the Qualcomm AI stack work across hardware? That's from Sumit. Yeah, yeah. So let's go back. If that uh, we got to make that point, if uh, if it wasn't uh, kind of already made. So um, here we are. Okay. So yes. So it doesn't actually literally say hardware at the bottom. Um, you know, we have a lot of operating systems we support, but today the AI stack runs on approximately 50 of our uh, SOCs. So when you're talking about a use case that you want to run on this device, let's say. And then you've got an adjacent use case in a, I don't know, a handheld scanner in a factory that's running, you know, Windows or something. Um, likely there's a part that that scanner runs that will run this stack, right? And so we've tried really hard to build it. I think the quote from Bill Gates about the platform this morning, we've tried really hard to build a platform so you really can kind of build once and port that innovation to other use cases or adjacent use cases and markets. And so the short answer is yes, we support a huge range of our SOCs. Um, we make updates monthly to our stack, so you get kind of a continuous upgrade. And we try really hard, even on those really older long tail parts, to maintain kind of a current set of features on those old parts. So you can kind of keep innovating, even you know once a part's been in market for a while. That's great. And, and Jeff, what I think is particularly neat is we're looking at a bunch of developers here, and I'm sure there's yeah. many online. Uh, the aha moment, I think, at least for me, would yeah. be, hey, we've got Qualcomm. There's other hardware people out here that produce chips. But today in market, the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 has the most powerful neural processing unit possible. And so, you know, you have a lot of frameworks and runtimes we're all talking about. But let's not bury the point that a lot of these AI models can move directly to the MPU, That's offloading right. the compute from the CPU and the GPU. And so you just get benefits. Uh, yeah, and this gets to application architecture like right. concurrency. Oh, my CPU or my GPU is busy, my GPU is running a game. I can offload, not only can I offload, so I get another processor to help do something complementary, but I'm, you know, in that processor you get best power performance in the industry, sure. right? And so these are all day, this laptop, you know, if you're gonna fly to London, you want the battery to still be good when you get there, you know, for your presentation. You know, that's what we want to do. And we don't want to compromise the AI experience or the also complementary AI experience just because I ran it on the GPU or I ran it on the CPU where I'm not power efficient, right? And so uh, that's a, a, obviously a key thing is well, I custom silicon and there'll be deeper talks. Uh, this talk on like hybrid AI and these other talks, we'll talk about, you know, kind of foreshadow our roadmap, we continue to improve that device and uh, make it more and more programmable and also more and more sort of power efficient. That's great. In the room, please go ahead. Otherwise, I'll just keep, I'll keep dominating. On yeah. I think Morimoto has a, an uh, apologies, it was Morimoto, Jonathan, I think had a follow up question. What's being done next to have a native experience with Onyx runtime? Will it move away from using DLC and follow the Onyx format? Ooh. Good question. So here's somebody who's actually, so you want to go ahead. Ah, I was going to ask my friend here. Okay. <laughs> no, so, so to move away from DLC is a download of content kind of thing. So this does talk a little bit about deployment, right? Yeah. And so I don't have a great, like, here's clearly the right answer, but like there are a bunch of different texts that we're trying to leverage to think about how you go deploy models, keep them updated, the serviceability of it and whatnot. Yeah. And so, you know, I asked you a question earlier about the neural processing engine. Uh, SDK yeah. as opposed to your engine AI kind of stack right. and how deployment of models works there. And so not the perfect answer, but it's something it's something we're working on. Uh, it's something I think we are furthest along down the path of our Qualcomm friends here. But it is acknowledged that this is a tricky a tricky thing. I don't know if you have anything to add. There. Yeah, I think he actually. So there's we might have the, the term two ter two two three letter acronyms for two different terms, right? Uh, which is. DLC is also a format we use in Snappy, so this ah. might be a developer who's used so the Snappy first. EP. So let's assume that that's the question Great. for a second, right? Um, in which case, yeah, we, we're moving to use the, the Qualcomm AI Engine Direct-based EP, and that will come with an upgraded set of features. I think it'll be a more natural experience, again, because we don't, we're going to rely on the Onyx runtime to be that orchestrator, that yeah. heterogeneous compute kind of traffic coordinator part of the stack and then 
you know, when you want to get to Hexagon, you go through the Qualcomm AI Engine Direct EP. And so that, that kind of, I'll call it artifact of the stack will go away as we do finish this integration. That's great. All right, continuing. Uh, Ivan Berg writes, will AI Met or other quantization techniques from Onyx and Qualcomm be talked about further at build? So devs can use or build quantized uh, models to run on Qualcomm and Pew hardware. Yeah, so let me, uh, I, I don't know specifically all the talk tracks. I would suspect that Vinesh, um, who will do a kind of a deep dive, will talk about a lot of that. You can also get some insight into that by looking at the stable diffusion how-to. A lot of talk about the tricks we used for quantizing generative AI to make it fit on the device and make it performant. Um, and look forward for kind of more of that kind of tutorial material coming from us. And, and somewhat related, we also have a breakout session, a hands-on lab, and a oh, discussion awesome. Q&A similar to this around optimizing your AI models for the Onyx runtime. So okay. this is the technology we're introducing called Olive. And so there are a bunch of different sessions about what is Olive, how it works, how it optimizes your model. And so definitely pay attention to that. Uh, show up at a lab, it should be a lot of fun, and we're going to just show you how to do this firsthand. So. Well, and find one of the Qualcomm people, come to the booth, come mm -hmm. to one of these talks. You know, quantization is, uh, you know, I think at the forefront, particularly generative AI, to really get the best power performance. You know, I'd like to think we're leaders in that space, um, but that's not to say it's an entirely a trivial matter. It's, we have a lot of tooling around it because it's got some tricks. Um, but we're, we want to, you know, demonstrate what it takes and, you know, help developers get there because quantizing your models just saves an incredible amount of memory bandwidth and power. And I think when you look at these, you know, 10 billion parameter networks, if we can get them quantized down, you know, we can effectively move the frontier for what's possible at the edge to go that's to bigger right. and bigger models. And so that's super important. We want developers engaged in that activity. That's right. And, you know, we haven't done a lot of uh, why would you want to run on the edge 101, but basically running your models on the edge, which is, again, on, at the computer chip level on a neural processing unit, yeah. you know, that's you get advantages in latency, yeah. security, privacy. And even e privacy, and even economics. Yeah. And so there's a lot of reasons why you'd want to do that. And again, this hybrid AI framework kind of showcases how you would do both. Take advantage of the space in Azure and run it up there on the web, as well as for the advantages we just enumerated, run it on the edge. Yeah, and we, you know, we were talking about use cases earlier, and you know we hit a little bit on like security and privacy. Like, you know, these generative AI models, these co-pilots, imagine a personal co-pilot, they could like, examine your calendar, you know, suggest how to rearrange it. It's not really clear that people want like their entire contact database and their entire calendar and everywhere they've driven like in the cloud, right? Like I'm not sure I would want that, right? But doesn't mean we should limit the experience of the end users, the use cases, like just because we can't figure that out. We can bring a lot of that innovation to the device and you can have a real like virtual personal assistant or a helper a co-pilot, like a real co-pilot in life that sits on your device and protects your privacy and the immediacy of the experience, right? So a big spectrum of use cases here, really exciting. There's more in the room. So as a developer, I think a lot about what products are in market today and what silicon is powering them, right? Yeah. So, you know, the latest, the latest Qualcomm, I see some Surface Pro 9 5Gs, I see this device here, yeah. that's the 8CX Gen 3 or the right. 80, 8280, I think we call it, something like that. So how, as a developer, you know, you continue to innovate, you continue to build new chips, there's generation after generation. How do I think about, you know, backwards compatibility and or support of more legacy silicon as you continue to crank out new and new products? Yeah, so uh, it's a huge topic, right? And so we, of course, you know, if you look at the AI stack and what I said earlier, we support 50 different SOCs, okay? We didn't right. do that overnight. And we put a lot of attention on making sure that but the API stay stable and we tell developers when we're going to change an API. I think it was just exchanging some email. We, we finally went to like 2.0 of our API for the, the um, neural processing SDK after I think like 60 or 70 releases of like basically the same API. So it's, it's top of mind. And I think in a market like compute, like a, I'll call it a Windows market, right? People expect their apps, like they expect to get a new device and get their apps and they expect them sure. to run. And at the same time, we want to take advantage of that latest hardware. So we're doing a lot of work right now to, and you know, like you said, AI is evolving super fast. And so when you think about something like Onyx Runtime, we want to move some of that, I'll call it late binding onto the device 
so that a model that you've like quantized or trained or you've got a certain architecture that you like will run on like this device and will run on the next device that's coming. Again, build it once, run it lots of places, but that next device can take advantage of hardware innovations, new operators, more streamlining. So we're really thinking about that right now. Literally have teams of people like think about that because when you guys innovate in Onyx and you want to add an operator or you want to add you know, something else, we want to make sure that you can map that innovation onto our silicon. And we have to do that by translating those models, right. quantizing them, and then doing that mapping. And we want to do it in a way where it's going to be portable. And so there's a lot of innovation in the ecosystem going on. And that can involve compiler technology. It can involve, you know, like late binding, just in time kind of binding. And we're looking at all those strategies to preserve the developer investment and the end user experience. That makes sense. Thank you. I believe we might have a question online. Yeah, I think pe people are excited to see a billion parameters here. Uh, follow up question then. Hey, what are the techniques to move towards 10 billion parameters <laughs> on edge? Oh, if I could tell you everything, you know. <laughs> is, it, is it simply 8-bit quantization or anything else needed? Not okay, so I mean, I think, I think you have to look at it as a system problem. You know, the challenges of generative models that are text-to-text -text have a certain set of problems. And maybe like voice-to-text-to-image, -to -text -to -image, for example, have a slightly different set of problems. In the image thing, you're doing a lot of what we think of as CD today. You're pushing tons of pixels around. And you're driven mostly by the, 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 the memory and the bandwidth required to do all that pixel computation. In language to language, you're moving a lot of basically words around. You're moving big lookup tables around. And that's a big pressure on the memory subsystem. So quantization is a key, right? Making those models physically smaller. They take less storage. They take less time to read off of your SSD. They take less time to bring into RAM. You know, At some point, these devices don't have enough RAM for these mega models. The quantization is clearly key, and then really it comes down to quantization, it comes down to doing it in a way that preserves accuracy and really managing system resources. So that we spent a lot of time, how do we get that on Hexagon? How do we do it at low power? How do we do things like, you look ahead so we do multiple tokens in one pass, so we're making efficient use of the memory that we brought into the processor? A lot of those kinds of techniques, so really system level hard computer science problems. So there's a question from us. Actually, there's a question there. Yeah. Yeah, please. Great. Okay. okay. Great. We got a brave soul. Uh, this is a question about device ecosystem. I, I kind of hear about the ubiquity of AI accelerators in hardware, and I'm just curious if you can share forecasts or your opinion, like when will this matter to most of my mm -hmm. users as, as a developer? When, when will they have the best experience uh, available? Is this something going to happen in certain tiers of... PCs. Okay, so you, you elaborate on your question. I was like, okay, so the first answer to your question is, you know, it matters now, right? Like the experience that most of our, the developers on Qualcomm Silicon, they're taking advantage of this high performance, low power AI accelerator. And I, like for literally thousands of use cases. Now, uh, the question about um, the second half of your question about, you know, when is it going to be available? You know, we're here, uh, Windows on Snapdragon. This is an extension to the Windows ecosystem of every investment we've already made and the rest of our silicon. And we're, we're going to push it super hard. We're really excited to partner with Microsoft on Onyx Runtime. I think it matters now because, like, this silicon is here. You can buy this device. The next one is, like, literally here. It's in the lab. We got, we've got this gen stuff running on the next version of silicon in our labs right now, in my lab in San Diego, it's here. So like, you know, you have to go to where the hockey puck is going, right? Um, really encourage, I mean, you saw how much generative AI happened in the first, what is it, five months of the year? We have another, you know, six to go. Uh, so I think now, take advantage of it now. It's like a great opportunity for us working together with Microsoft to ha make it happen on device. For sure, and it's a good question because like, if I do my job right, the framework or the platform above the hardware actually just lights up, right? right? So the better, the the more mature the hardware gets, the more MPUs that are entering the market and stuff like that, you would hope, and our intent is that the Onyx framework with the olive optimization and stuff goes and leverages what's available. So it knows what the hardware is. It understands that the yeah. 8CX Gen 3 has an incredible MPU kind of thing, and then goes and offloads things. And so we're on a journey. We're not there yet, but yeah. today we're showcasing hybrid AI, how we're running in different places. Hybrid also means we're running on different processors. And so, you know, soon, 
uh, not today, everybody will have a neural processing unit. AI workloads will are uniquely designed to run on these MPUs, right? And so pretty soon, adopting Onyx framework means you're adopting the best hardware opportunities you can for your app. And that goes back to the backward compatibility or forward compatibility. We're going to work with Microsoft to make that experience transportable so that this next, next laptop gets even better and it, you can really leverage that experience, but without leaving your customers behind on, the, on their older hardware, right? I like how you said that. Yeah. Okay, appreciate it, thanks. Any other questions from the audience? I think we're almost at the session mark. I we think I saw going. five minutes or so. Is that about right? I, I think we have about five minutes. Great. So I'll tee up a couple softballs. Yeah. So yeah. like, hey, you have a booth here. Yes. I think you had a couple things running. Do you have your sample app Air Derby running and stuff? Yeah, there's a there's a there's a bunch of them. That's gaming. That's yep. AI and gaming, right? Yep. So again, I think that you know AI is really going to be everywhere. This idea that like you could have. Um, you know, uh, an agent, you know, I don't know what, I'm not a huge gamer, but you could play against somebody on the plane, you know, your buddy is not available to play, you know, a, an opponent and you're going to get an opponent that's going to learn your, your tricks and, you know, really give you that competition. Um, super resolution, we didn't talk about that, but super resolving, um, you know, images in a game, right? XR experience where you can super resolve the part of your eye that's foveated or whatever you're looking for and like, not spending rendering energy on the pixels your eye can't right. see. AI is like, you know, the, back to this gentleman's question, it's like becoming so pervasive and at every level of the user experience from the camera that's looking back at you like the experience pack, like a super resolution, I know working with you guys on some super res stuff, but we also do with, with Meta, we work on XR super res stuff. It's everywhere and, and it really, you know, I think one of the challenges is that we, we're here, we're as developers, we're at a developer conference, but our end users, like, it's like magic. Like, it, we want to make it invisible to them for the most part. We just want them to have some magical sure. experience. Right? That's awesome. And so, hey, we're winding down, yeah. but I believe there's a final demo we, we perhaps want to close out on. Yeah, I think, let's have another demo. You okay. Another one, Akit? Yeah, let's Thank do you. it. Um, maybe at the risk of like making it a real demo, we could take a prompt from That's, this audience. Yeah. You're out of mind. So, anybody have an idea? Prompt. Yeah. Anyone online with a suggestion for a prompt? I don't get set up. There you go. There you go. For you sports okay. fans, we got a sports. All right. Let's. Yeah. Let's, let's try go ahead that. and do that one. What do you have? What do we got? We got portrait of Lionel Messi, red and green. Let's see what else we're gonna do. Throw some of the side pose. You, you, we tried it earlier. You had like angry eyes or serious eyes or something. Serious eyes. Let's see if we can get uh, for you soccer fans out there. Let's see what we can do. The eyes are always let's tough. See what it does. Let's see what it does. And this will show you that it's like it's it's amazing. Imagine what your developers can do if this is just you know the start of the Gen AI revolution. Okay, it's looking good going to be like a head-on shot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I said red on green and... There you go. It made How's that? That's green. great. <laughs> Serious <laughs> eyes. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what if we said funny eyes or something, right? Laughing. Say laughing and see what happens. You never know. This is like Vegas. Only better. <laughs> red on... Uh, no. Let's see what... Yeah. Again, it'll be in our booth. You could come between sessions. We wouldn't want to, you know, you have to go to the Onyx Runtime session, the other one time. But if you have a minute, come by, type your favorite little query in, you'll see it live, you'll see that it's... Uh, Related, we have a Windows on ARM session as well. Right. And so we showcase some of the great Qualcomm stuff there as well. Excited about it. There you go. <laughs> Fun. So, okay. I think that's good. I suspect awesome. we're at time, yeah. Jeff. Yeah, it's okay. been a lot of fun. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for having us at Build. Really excited. Uh, lots more coming. Honored to have you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.